people. Uh, Colby Fayok. Colby, how's it going, man? Thanks for the kind words. It's going well. Uh, you know, happy yeah. to be here myself. Yeah, absolutely. And I think um, just a quick, uh, you know, shout out that Colby just got promoted to Director of Developer Experience at Cloudinary. Thank you. So thank everybody, you. Uh, round of applause for Mr. Uh, Colby Fayok here. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, so today we're going to go over uh, the Cloudinary WordPress plugin. And that thing gets me super stoked because like the thing is, is on the internet, what's not more important than images? Yeah. And yeah. we need to smush them, JPEG them and minify and do all the good things. So before we start doing that and diving into how it's used with Headless WordPress, uh, just a couple of things here, housekeeping notes, um, etiquette alert, uh, be excellent to one another. Uh, this is being recorded and it's going to be posted on YouTube after and it's going to live on there. So uh, yeah, be kind, courteous. And um, I'm going to at the uh, end after Colby and I are done or at some point during the uh, stream, I'll send in some um, links to uh, Colby's info and all the Cloudinary docs and all the good stuff that we're going to go over. Now, just a couple of uh, goals for today. Um, we're going to go over default features of the plugin uh, transformations, insights on WordPress, uh, other extended features, and then customizing uh, Cloudinary images using uh, the the library essentially that that Colby wrote. So let's let's get started here. I'm going to take off uh, these slides here. So Colby, what should I do? Because here's the thing: like I have, do you think I should just like start with like from a fresh WordPress install, installing the Cloudinary plugin? Yeah. yeah so the the nice thing about that is it shows how easy it is to get set up because it like it and i'm not just saying that because i'm from cloud right like it's it's ridiculously simple to actually onboard uh, a wordpress account but you know um if it, if it makes it easier we could just dive into the feature set okay uh let's go ahead let me see hold on what do i have here so this is the install I'm going to use when we start like actually demoing. But let me go ahead and go into my uh, WP admin here at WP Engine. I'm going to click through this because I know that on this install on this server, I don't have. I'm pretty sure I don't have the Cloudinary plugin installed. Okay. So let's see what it does. Okay. So I'm going to click Add New, and then let's search through for. Indeed. Okay. And install now and, and just going to do the thing, Colby, here? I was press, press Pretty the much. There, there's just one simple thing you have to do, and that's just connect your accounts. So uh, now on the left-hand side there, you'll find that Cloudinary tab or whatever it's called in the sidebar. Um, you can head to the setup. And at ah. this point, if you don't have an account, of course, you can sign up. But um, since you already do have an account, here is where you would paste in your connection string. Um, did you did you want to show that? Or the only concern there is the API key and stuff. Oh, but that's yeah. something you, you could reset if you'd like to. Yeah. Um, but we can always skip that and just show. Yeah. So this is, yeah, this is my account now. So once I paste that string in um, and it's all set up, here is the install that I already have it installed on and set up. Yep. And, and, and pretty much you paste in that connection string, you click next, and then you're dumped into this dashboard where uh, what's going to start happening in the background is Cloudinary is going to automatically uh, sync up all your media. So that's not only images, that's also videos too. So it's going to sync all this up oh. to your Cloudinary account. Yep. Um, and then from there, it'll automatically update the image nodes. Uh, correct me if I'm using the wrong WordPress terminology, but the image nodes throughout the entire installation. So um, anywhere that you're using those images, uh, it's automatically going to now start serving those um, through Cloudinary. Okay. Wow. That's simple. So yeah, um, let's, let's do this because since this is already plugged in and I have some like, of course, Star Wars nerd images uh, <laughs> on here. Uh, Holy, I'm going to click through the monolithic uh, URL first, which is right here. Yeah. 
just to show how easy it's already like um is this like my local host yeah that's that's headless so let me just click on this so i think that one's gonna be um oh wait that one was the one where you didn't install yet oh that's right yeah Yeah. here headless stoke okay i like that headless stoke (laughs) (laughs) i my i think like trying to gain like some kind of brand for myself in the the devx community i think it's the jeff calls me the stoke man so (laughs) stoke wars stoke wars there there was uh david one of the um guys that like contributes heavily to wp graphql he made, a, he made a headless site and i got stoked on it and he's like hey that was one of my um bucket list items to get a friend stoke on one of my headless stuff <laughs> i was like man um so here okay so here's here is the image that's being loaded from cloudinary on a traditional wordpress site and let me go ahead and ex- inspect it so on the elements tab here, as as y'all can see, get out of mm-hmm. here. Whoops. The URL is coming from Cloudinary right there, mm-hmm. right there, Colby. So, um, so tell me how that's a uh, just if you could talk about a little bit about like you know the the source for um, where these are being served and everything. You guys are using a CDN, correct? Yeah. So. In, in the background, after that sync process uh, happens, and one thing I just want to caveat on is if the image or video hasn't yet synced, it'll still be served from WordPress until it gets synced. So you're never going to see like a broken process there where you're uh, where it's going to stop serving your original ones altogether. Does that make sense? Oh, so it kind of falls back before it. To, to the WordPress image, is that what you're saying? Yeah, so like once it's available, it'll then serve it. Like once it's synced, it'll do that. Because if you're doing a new site and you already have a huge site, that might take a little time, right? So um, it'll just, once it's all synced uh, and it's per, oh, wow. per image or per video, um, you can actually see the status. If you see in your little admin bar there, there's a little enable Cloudinary status button there. It'll actually show you the oh. status of the image itself. I don't know if that's going to reload the page or how that's. How does that work there? Well, yeah. So now if you go back that to that image, you can actually see in the top left there, there's a little Cloudinary tab and it'll show you exactly. Um, do you see it down there on the image itself? Oh, the, this here? Yeah. Colby? Yeah. Exactly. And it should, I don't know if it's on drop down or on click. Um, if it's not opening on. Um, do you want me to? Cl- oh, oh you're in mobile. Uh, I, you're in mobile mode. I think that's why it didn't up, uh, open on hover. Um, but it, it doesn't matter. But uh, so that's going to show you the original size. It's going to show you the optimized size uh, for the format that you're currently delivering in, um, as well as to show the current transformations. And transformations are something you can edit uh, throughout the WordPress instance. But this isn't um, like critical to the workflow. But it's an easy way to show oh, wow. is the image being delivered from Cloudinary, and like what kind of savings am I actually getting on that image by optimizing it? Uh, so it's it's helpful in that perspective. So this automatically optimizes the format and the size in relation to your browser exactly so oh wow so the two parameters that we're seeing there one is f auto the other is q auto f auto stands for format of auto so at the cdn layer with cloudinary what's going to happen is we're going to see what browser or device that you're requesting that image from and we're automatically going to serve the most modern format or rather the most efficient format because you know depending on the size like there's a bunch of things that might make one format more efficient than the others but we're going to determine the most efficient format for that image and then we're going to return that depending on the browser and device um now q auto stands for quality of auto and if you if you remember ever using like a quality of 75 or 50 to like reduce the compression or make it stronger um we're by using q auto we're going to automatically do that for you so we're going to see how much we can compress it without actually distorting the visual quality of the image so it's basically optimizing as much as it can oh wow that is awesome okay Um, but then, so uh, other things that happens on the traditional WordPress instance is uh, that image is automatically going to get lazy loaded. Uh, it's responsive, um, and you know, making sure that it's trying to load it as efficient and uh, to give a good experience. Okay. 
So just for like parity's sake here, um, is my dev server running? Yeah, I think this is on. Let me go to the um, Book of Boba Fett path. Or I think I had, did I uh, input images? The on Book these? of Boba Stoke. Boba Stoke. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by puns. the way, and the thing is, uh, I hate to, I hate to be critical about that uh, series. Um, not wasn't s- super a fan of it. I hope mm. I'm not crushing anybody's feelings, but uh, just just not a fan. But this is the same image that was coming from my uh, monolithic site. But this is um, I'm just spinning up a, a local server on Faust JS, mm. and if we inspect the same image, <clears throat> uh, it's also coming from Cloudinary. So it's essentially. Uh, just so I'm understanding this fully correctly, Colby, this is ex- exactly doing the same thing as it was on my monolithic site. Am I am I am I right? So I wouldn't use the word exactly the same now because there's there's some JavaScript required on a traditional instance to make it load properly. Okay. So I think there might be a slight difference in how it's actually loaded in the uh, in the actual content node. Um, but for all intents and pur- intents and purposes, it is going to load that optimized. Uh, image uh, and load it from Cloudinary to make sure you're still delivering that. But uh, because now we're getting into that headless land where we're able to query the data, we're going to be able to have a little bit more flexibility with how we actually take that image and deliver it uh, through the front end. Okay, cool. Man, and I think that's such a big thing because there's a lot of things that like our tooling in our space um, gives us, which is mainly like time back. And when you don't have to fuss with like having to do this under the hood, like from scratch, that's uh, that, that's awesome, man. So totally like the instant optimization is just oh. like it again. I, I know I'm from Cloudinary, but like it's just <laughs> it, the WordPress plugin, I feel like is one of those things that doesn't get enough credit because it's so easy to install and just automatically get all that optimization. Okay, I'm going to go back now to the um, admin here, the admin tab. And then um, there's other things actually, Colby, that I wanted to because I I'm like I'm like kind of like new to this because I just downloaded this and I let Cloudinary kind of do its thing. So mm-hmm. what else can we like actually showcase here? Uh, gener- you know, like should I go to image settings, video? Sure, should- yeah. So a lot of the a lot of the like image and video settings at this point will be. Uh, somewhat disabling and scaling back some of the options. And it's also, it gives you some preferences. So if we go to image settings, for instance. Okay. okay. Because uh, by default, Cloudinary will automatically do all this for you, right? So maybe you don't want to, maybe you only want to do videos or maybe you only want to do images. So first of all, you have the option to uh, only sync and deliver one or the other, right? Um, Maybe for some reason you don't want to optimize them, or maybe you want to specify a specific format or quality. Um, At this point, it's really just fine tuning it to your preferences. But of course, like I would recommend just using the default because doing that automatically for you is going to typically yield the best results. Um, But, you know, people have their preferences and we want to be able to support that. now, where it does kind of get into more uh, more interesting use cases is starting with like image transformations that you see there where you can add global image transformations so that maybe you want to, I, I don't know, maybe you want to make all the images throughout the site uh, black and white or sepia or, you know, something like that. Wow. You can, you have the ability to globally transform all those images, but you don't only have that ability globally. You can also do that at the image level. So that image and video level. So uh, for instance, if you go into the media library, you don't have to do this. If you go to the media library and open up one of those images, you can specify whatever transformations for just that image that you would want. Let's see. Let me do that real quick. So if I click on this, is it is it on the attachment page? Maybe. Right here. Maybe. Let's try. Oh no, that's that. Uh, I would have thought you would have been able to get to it by just clicking through. 
on the actual image. Now, let me, let me mess around. Oh, Mark. Uh, thanks, Marco. Marco's saying you have to actually go to the list mode. So in the top left there in the media library, if you uh -huh. click that list icon, do you see that? This one? Yeah. Oh, and it has there a cloud icon. Yep. Yep. So that, that okay. icon is going to be this uh, status of the sync. So green means everything is happy. Uh, the oh. image or video is synced up to the uh, Cloudinary and it's ready to go. It should be being delivered um, through Cloudinary. Uh, but you see that little add transformations there. So that gives you the ability to add the transformations directly to that single uh, asset. Um, so whether you want to add some fun text or again, change the color or you know whatever you want to do, so it's gonna to be clear. It's gonna have to. It's gonna. <laughs> oh, it, what do it I needs have to, to do? It needs to be the Cloudinary syntax to be clear. Oh. Uh, you know the URL transformation syntax, uh, like we were seeing F Auto and Q Auto. It needs to be that uh, URL syntax. But um, oh, try. Gotcha. Let me see. Let me find one to yeah. show an example. Um, Cloudinary art effects. That's a good one. The Cloudinary artifacts are just like a simple one that you can easily apply. So that's a nice one to usually just uh, give a try. Um, so how about try to add E underscore art or E underscore E underscore cartoonify. Try that one. Oh, okay. Is that the right syntax there? Yes. Oh, that's see. sick. That is yeah. sick. And this is a setting that you Dude. can, of course, tune. <laughs> Oh, eCPI, oh. Marco also mentioned is another one that you could have used, uh, but that's changing it to like the sepia color. Um, Y'all. But like, this is just a, a, a simple one though, right? But like the, you have the ability to use anything from the uh, transformation library or whatever that would fit into that Cloudinary <laughs> URL because uh, the URL is the API and then do whatever transformations that you want to it. You could probably even add text if you want, but you this have to actually rad. specify the, the correct syntax. This is rad. I mean, this is, and I'm sorry, I'm 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 from the '80s, but this is totally like right now. This is this is this is awesome. Um, is the syntax on the docs? Uh, I would expect absolutely. Totally? Okay. Yep. So um, the good one that I like to is there's the transformation API, uh, the URL API reference. That's like a extensive reference of everything. But generally okay. speaking, like any effects that you're gonna see. Uh, throughout the Cloudinary documentation. They give you a little widget that shows uh, how you can do it in the different languages. Um, now, this this being the WordPress page is really probably going to be mostly just the WordPress information. But yeah, yeah. if you go to up to the search and search like art effects, for instance, and go to probably any of the... Yes. Anything. Yeah, so that's going to be the transformation API that I was mentioning. Okay. Um, so that that works completely fine. And then if you click like example or syntax details, you, you can see that API there for exactly how oh. you can do it. So for this one, it's artifacts. You can use E underscore art and then the filter name. So you have a ton of different ones. And those ones are kind of like Instagram filters, uh, you know, where you click it and changes the colors and how the image actually appears. And it's wild to me that you can like, because I'm not very good with like CSS and just like imagery on sites, but this is wild to me how you can do so many things with it. And then this on the layer on top of this with cloud areas, it kind of simplifies this uh, to make me feel like an artist. So <laughs> yeah, I feel like, I'm glad I that we're empowering artsy. you. I'm glad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stoked. Dude. All right. So um, I know you mentioned, so there is one, there's a couple of, there's two things I kind of want to um, mention here. Cause I was playing around with this last night, but the first thing is let's just, for um, for uh, headless and GraphQL sake, WP GraphQL. Mm. Um, let's see what the um, response comes back when we're querying for like a featured image. Since we are now uh, offloading to uh, Cloudinary, so I'm going to write a query to show this. Let's call it all posts query. <clears throat> And we're going to query for all the posts and posts have nodes tied to it. And one of the nodes we want is the featured image and that itself has nodes. And the node we want from the featured image is the source URL to show that it is coming back from 
Cloudinary and what it looks like in WP GraphQL. When I hit play, it'll give me the uh, URL to Cloudinary's uh, image that Boba Fett is now cartoonified, as you can see in the graphical editor. I'm super stoked about that. The next thing I want to talk about, Colby, is your next Cloudinary image library. I was messing around with it a little bit yesterday, and I, I was super stoked with it too. I used the Cloud image with the Faust JS framework, which is essentially built on not on top of Next.js for headless WordPress. Uh, so let me show you what I made, and then let's talk through the library and look at the things that I did not use. Olvi built a library for um, uh, for component Im uh, image optimization components in Next.js, and I'm using Faust right now, y'all. I don't know if um, if you're not familiar with Faust. Uh, Faust JS is the uh, headless front end framework built for making you know headless sites, uh, WordPress sites easier. Um, in this here, I essentially made a uh, image called, uh, a component called Fran image using uh, Colby's uh, uh, cloud image component. Um, and what it is, is it's essentially, um, I'm just using, I'm setting some state and using the image ID, pulling those, I've made a, uh, a constant variable here with the arrays of these, these are the image ideas I'm pulling from Cloudinary, from my Cloudinary account, which are just so that I can show everybody since we're demoing stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, here's here's my account. And then in this media library from Cloudinary, um, each of these has a unique ID. All I had to do to util utilize Colby's library, this is how easy it is, is I just put um, my, I don't want to show my environment variables, but I put my um, Cloudinary, um, uh, name, if you will, on the environment variable, and then it just started automatically having access to those uh, IDs here. And basically, what this is, as you can see in in the um, let me pull this route up here. I'm going to go to this uh, um, and excuse me for my CSS, y'all, or my lack of Star Wars picks. Um, so this this is my image component that I'm using. This is Colby's library. Um, and if you just click next, it'll uh, show the next image um, from that array that I'm um, pulling in. Um, what's cool is this text here uh, is coming from, I believe, an overlay. Here are the properties here um, uh, in Colby's docs. Uh, yeah, you can you know, write an actual text in there with may the force be with you with the font weight and the stroke and stuff like that. So, so yeah, Colby, I mean, tell, tell us more, a little bit more about um, this on the, on the library that you made here. Yeah. So uh, next Cloudinary is the library and the goal with it is to bring an easier way to interface with uh, Cloudinary images and transformations uh, inside of an XJS application. Um, it actually wraps the Next.js image component. So for everything that you're used to using with Next Image, it works out of the box. This just extends it and uses Cloudinary Tech to handle uh, a lot of the different things that's happening. Um, so as you can see, there's a ton of different examples there with features that you can add. But I think one of the more interesting things in our conversation here is that you can kind of combine these worlds, right? So in the example that you showed, you were actually manually getting the ID. But what you could do is uh, that featured image that you added, for instance, you can pass that source of that image directly into the next Cloudinary component. And you can use all the APIs on top of that then to do all the transformations with that component. So for oh. instance, do you have a page, like a post page that shows that featured image that you just added? Yeah, I do actually. Hold on one sec. It's coming from the um, single.js file. Are you, are you familiar with Faust a little bit? Have you messed with it? Oh, okay. So this WordPress templates folder I'm in, it's um, all the uh, templates in WordPress that hmm. like obeys the WordPress template hierarchy in the monolithic um, side of the word, uh, monolithic side of WordPress, except this is the JavaScript uh, parody of it. So essentially, um, whatever uh, the user wants to see, 
um, it goes back and asks WordPress, hey, what data are we trying to resolve here? And then this is the catch-all route that it just goes, okay, mm. like these are the possible templates that it can resolve. So this uh, user, this because they're hitting this path, essentially. Jeff, I hope I explained that correctly. By the way, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so that so it's it's showing this uh, single dot js um, uh, uh, file that 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 Boba Fett um, book of Boba Fett. Uh, awesome. Well, let's yeah. let's give it a try. Do you want to first pull that page up in your browser? Sure. So that we can see that original header. Yeah. So ideally, I think we're going to see two images. Oh, what was this? Hmm. So, okay, I think, are you currently using the next image component? You must be, right? I believe. So is that in the entry header, possibly? Yeah, I think so. Let's look at that component. So what we can do is we can literally just swap that out. So we just need to find where that is, or maybe there's a featured image component. Here. Yeah, so there's a featured image Here. component. Let's go there. Okay. There we go. Okay. So at the top, let's first comment out the image, uh, the next image component. Okay. And now let's add the new import for next Cloudinary. So that's uh, destructuring CLD image from next Cloudinary. The CLD image. Yep, exactly. Um, and now okay. just replace <laughs> the image tag with CLD image. And the first that at first, like that's literally all you have to do. Oh, really? That's cool. <laughs> yep, yep. So that's that's what the benefit is of me having wrapped the original image. Well, no, you could keep that a complete original code and oh. just replace the the name of it. So instead of image, just CLD image. Oh, oh. yeah. Oh, so that's the benefit of having wrapped the image component is that it, everything you expect to work with image just works. It's just the drop and replacement. So now if you save that and go back, it should just man, work. Colby, man, if this, I hope I didn't break anything. Uh oh, <laughs> there we go. There we go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And um, I, I, it might be, you probably have to inspect the html to be able to see that it looks like it's in the background of so i think that's the inline image i think the featured image is the background of that top part if i'm not mistaken i believe you're right yeah but if we look at it we should be able to see what is the entry header there yeah like if we look at the image itself we should see that that is now coming from cloudinary if you want to open up that html node there it's probably in that figure that's my <laughs> guess Maybe that figure above the, a couple lines above. This one here. Yeah, that's oh. what I'm thinking. And then inside that, if you want to open that up. Ha, there we go. Okay. So. Oh, there it is. Yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. So we can see yeah. it's loading from Cloudinary it's and cool. uh, it's loading that source set because it's using the same properties as it was using for next image. Um, but now we're able to successfully load that Cloudinary URL and get all the Cloudinary goodness that we want um, by using the uh, CLD image component. Oh, this is, this is, this is super cool. Um, so now you can even, <laughs> you can even cartoonify this image again if you want to. Uh, let me find out how to do that for yeah, you. Could you. Could you do that? Yeah, because I want to do that too. <laughs> let me find it. I just want to cartoonify everything. God, y'all, I'm so terrible at CSS. Please excuse me <laughs> for my. <laughs> so I think you just try just adding cartoonify to the um, to the image node to seal the image. Just add cartoonify. Where like like on the H, uh, in the Next.js application? Oh yeah 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 yeah. I'm pretty sure I just have it as a property. Like, so literally just write cartoonify. Because if you don't add the equals, it just defaults to true, which is all you need to do. Like you just want me to write. Just write Cartoonify, yeah. Oh, okay. I'm getting a type error, so that doesn't, doesn't seem to want to work. I'm going to add this to my 
work together. Yes. <laughs> well, it, I wonder if it might be like an older version or something that doesn't have it, but I mean, it doesn't hurt to try. Yeah, I let's think see. That that's. Do you are you TypeScript user, Colby? By the way. So, oh, it's working by the way, but um. Oh so, wow. So I'm I'm getting to be. <laughs> I'm not, I originally wrote this not in TypeScript and then I, re, uh, I had to migrate it over to uh, TypeScript, but we were able to see in that result there that it was, wow. it is cartoonified now. Right. So it was that easy to do. Man, that's pretty slick. Let's, Here, uh, let's try another one. Uh, go yeah, back, yeah. go back there. And yeah, instead fun. of cartoonify or even include in addition to uh, do you remove background with a capital B. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Okay. Now, what does the, this do? <laughs> so this is going to use on the fly background remove. Oh, uh, no, you actually have to have an add on enabled to do this. So, never mind. This one's not going to work. Okay. Because um, that's probably too much to try to do, do I, now. Is this a package I can install? Or? So, it's uh, in your Cloudinary account. There's just an add on called Cloudinary AI background removal, and you just need to enable it, but probably too much for this call. Okay. But once okay. you do enable it, then you can easily remove back the background from images, which is super helpful in itself. Um, but now that you're serving it here, you can do like all those different examples that you saw on that page. You can do whatever you want for uh, for that image. This is pretty cool. Yeah. Holy smokes. Okay, cool. I'm going to keep playing with this. Um, all right. Uh, let's see. What, what other components are in here? Colby, cloud image, cloud so image. Yeah. yeah, so I created uh it's it uses pretty much the same API as CLD image, but it's CLD OG image, which creates an open graph image. And it's just an easy, really easy. If you look at the examples, um if you click the examples under CLD OG image, like you can see how easy it is to create uh oh. really simple open graph images. And if you scroll down, you can see some other examples there. I think there's just one other image and yeah, that's just a silly turtle floating in space, but you can see like, <laughs> that's all the markup you need to do that. Wow. That's wild. And then and on it, top of that, I'm sorry. Yeah. No, I, I, I was wondering if like, um, just for, if for our folks who might like be seriously considering using the, the cloud near plugin and opening an account, just for full transparency, Colby, I'm on a free uh, Cloudinary account, and the obviously the WordPress uh, plugin is it's free. It's yeah, it's yeah. source and it's free. Um, There's a generous free tier. So um, okay, I, I was just wondering. Yeah, at what yeah. point if I start messing around with this, like at what point will, will I start having to pay? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. What, is my question. <laughs> yeah. So I wouldn't if it's just like a personal site and yeah. or like your portfolio or like even a blog that gets a decent amount. Of, I would be surprised if you uh, went out of the free tier because it's it is pretty generous. Now the thing that I see hit people the most is when they actually don't optimize images, which is kind of like the the basic feature, right? Um, but a lot of people miss it because you need to add that automatic optimization. Now with the next Cloudinary, I'm actually automatically adding that for people. So you don't have to even think about it. Um, but if you're not optimizing the images, say that you have like a, a raw image from Unsplash and you're serving that on your site and that's like say 500 megabytes. And if you're delivering that every single time, that's going to very quickly eat up your bandwidth. Um, now that's not good for a number of reasons of why you're serving a 500 megabyte image, but um, you know, beyond the case of serving that optimize, uh, that's going to, from a Cloudinary uh, usage perspective, uh, eat away very quickly. Um, so as long as you're optimizing, you, you should be in a pretty good spot. Okay. Very cool. That's very cool. So cloud OG image and then the cloud upload button. What does that do? Yeah. So we have a, an upload widget as part of our, uh, the, you know, different tooling that we have. And, um, I created a way to easily drop that into, uh, a Next.js application. So, um, using that component, you can easily add the ability for somebody to upload using our cloudinary widget and, uh, it has a lot of different options on it. It's, it's pretty handy. Um, and the button is, cool. is just a button, whereas the upload widget gives you a little bit more control over the uh, UI that you render on top of that. Oh, very cool. Okay. But then finally, there's the CLD video player, which, you know, as it as it sounds like is a video player for assets that you have in Cloudinary, where um, this one is somewhat new, so it's not as extensively built out as the 
uh, the other one. But if you go to examples, you can see a few things like you can theme the uh, video player, you know, customize it to whatever your needs are. And, oh. um, and of course, it'll automatically optimize it just as it would with an image. So again, like the image, the optimization isn't only for images, it's for videos as well. So uh, videos can be huge files, right? So we want to make sure that we're optimizing those as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, is that a Corgi? Yes, yes. Um, oh, I, I forget what site I got this from. I was searching like Unsplash for videos or something, and I found a site. So uh, okay. this one seemed cute. So I added this one in. I'm going to um, let me. I want to save some time for questions. Plus, I'm going to um, throw some of these links in the chat here um, for the folks here um, who are trying to follow along. Give me one second. And then Colby, your Twitter handle is. That's you. That is me. <laughs> I found that um, we were talking about video games earlier. I, I found this. 80s, That's fantastic. Yeah. And I, I was like, I got to use that. There's um, there. Oh, Kellen had uh, showed me. There's a there's a. Um, forgot the name of the the developer uh, i think she's developer advocacy or she might just be um a pure software engineer she explained how she got her start through a video story but she did it in like a um like a uh, a nintendo like a 80s game format where mm. she was like jump Anyway, I'll have to send you the link, Colby. It's it's actually super cool. Sounds cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, coder, 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 yeah. coder. Yeah, that, that, that's it, Kellen. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. Transfer. Here's the. She has some awesome videos. Yep. Where's our? I'm just gonna search WordPress. There it is. Yeah. So this is uh, this page itself that you found there. That's just uh, a few helpful tools for um, doing some more advanced uh, WordPress stuff. But there is a generic WordPress page. I think it's just a level up from that one. Um, that just has a little bit more information about getting started. But you know, for all intents of and purposes, like if all you want to do is optimize, like you just literally need to install, and it's yeah. pretty much done. Like everything else will be handled for you. That's awesome. Um, cool. I'm going to leave, um, that's, that's all I wanted to go through. Colby, is there anything we might've been missing or something that you might want to rehash on or go over? I don't think so. Um, I think the biggest takeaway is like, you know, this, uh, it works well, whether you're on a traditional WordPress instance, or if you're on a headless instance, which is, you know, super helpful. Um, and it like just works. You don't have to uh, jump through any hoops to get it working properly. And you can cartoonify your images this, to your heart's desire. Yeah. This cartoonify, pro I, I'm, I am, man, I'm going to play with this all day today now. <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome. Does anybody have any questions? Is there any questions in the chat I missed? Hold on. Let me look at the chat. Yeah, no questions. Cool. Yeah, well, that's that's all I got too. Um, hold on. Oh, there's one more thing I wanted to ask you, Colby. Hold on a second. Uh, um. So. This is uh, just uh, just for like people that you're using because I haven't really um, spent too much time in Next Thirteen and um, using. I think obviously it's just an app directory instead of pages now. Um, but this is this works fine on Next Thirteen, right? Yeah. So the biggest mm. difference for the CLD image, and I think most of the components is. Um, you now need to use that use client uh, directive and you would need to place that at the top of the file that you're using the uh, component in. Um, I'm hoping to eventually find some kind of workaround where I can automatically include that, but I haven't found how to make that work quite yet. Um, now, the only other thing that I have noticed is the CLDOG image doesn't work out of the box. Uh, apparently the 
uh, the new app directory doesn't use the head component. Um, I actually need to update the documentation. Oh. Um, so what you do is I, if you see under helpers there, I have that get CLD image URL. I want to create a new helper for OG images uh, specifically, um, but that way you can use the same API. If you do, you see on the left there under helpers under the sidebar a little bit higher there. Oh, here, yeah, yeah. If you click I... on uh, either basic usage or examples, uh, either would probably work. Um, okay. But you can see like it's the same API as the image component. Uh, you got your width, height, and source. That's the the core of it. Um, but then you can add those same props that you would use as uh, properties to the object instead. Um, but ultimately, you just generate that URL and pass it in through the metadata uh, file. I think it's like meta or is it SEO or is it meta.js or something like that? But um, they have a new convention for how you define metadata in uh, Next 13. So you can use this or what will eventually exist is a helper specifically for OG images uh, where you just pretty much specify the source of the image if that's all you want to do, or you can add additional transformations just like anything else and um, design your own custom uh, overlays with text or, you know, because that's how a lot of people are creating those dynamic uh, social uh, media cards where maybe it has the name of the blog post, right? Or if you want to yeah. put uh, a custom image where it has Book of Boba Stoke on it, like you can do that completely custom uh, <laughs> using this URL generator. I think, and it's funny because just for clarity on my sake, um, do you have to pass this in as a, at the top of the file because the app dir directory is on the server? It's like server side. Is that right? Like, so, do you so have to my specify in Next 13, like, hey, I'm going to use this on the client? Otherwise, that's my, Yeah, that's my that understanding with it. And the reason okay. why we currently require use client with CLD image is because of the um, we're using state to help uh, improve the experience in a few places. And because of that, that's why it needs to have the ability to uh, use the client. Um, now, I I don't know that it's the, the perfect next, implementation yeah. for for Next 13, but you know that's, that's currently the state of it. And we'll see where we can go from there. Okay. Yeah, I need to get more savvy on Next 13, to be honest. I haven't yeah. messed around with it. Uh, there is one question by... When will Cloudinary integrate with Dolly? I want that AI query param. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I had already, interestingly enough, like I forget is like months ago, I created a custom function where um, you cannot, you can do that with Cloudinary where you can in integrate it into the pipeline. Uh, now the only issue is uh, when I just tested it the other day is it takes longer than 10 seconds to run that Dolly request. So it times out as a serverless function. Um, now, more oh. recently, I've been trying to get it running as a as an edge function. I've just been having a hard time getting the edge function image response to work. You might have seen that Twitter thread. I've been uh, slamming the head on my desk for it. But um, hopefully, eventually, I'll get that figured out and then have a nice example. Because the idea there is that you can just specify the prompt in the URL, just like you would any other Cloudinary API, and you can automatically generate that image. Oh, man, that's sick. Yeah. Okay. I think like some of the practical use cases there though, is like, imagine you have a website where you want to generate some fancy background image and then put text yeah. on top. Right. So yeah. you can say like abstract Van Gogh, uh, background. Right. And then you put whatever text you want on top and that's going to be your header image. Um, so, you know, that's just one simple example, but, uh, I'm trying to think of more of the practical use cases as opposed to like some of the, just like fun ones, man. This is going to be an interesting, and it's funny with the, all the AI stuff, uh, what we were talking about Colby um, prior in like a one-on-one -on -one where as far as the tooling is concerned and like being a software developer in the future, it's just going to be part of this, your tool belt. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? And I think, you know, I know there's like, kind of like controversy about, oh, is it going to replace you? I, I don't think so. I think what it's going to do is it's just going to speed up our productivity. Totally agree. I think it's going to cut out uh, out a lot of us sifting through docs and stuff. Instead, we just ask AI, "Hey, make this," or "How do I do this?" Yeah, you were doing something with like um, next uh, middleware we were talking about, and you, 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 I thought I don't think Chat GPT got it, but anyway, yeah. but yeah, that's that's exactly. No, I, I think it's going to empower us to build better and faster. And, you know, I think the most important thing is to embrace it so that yep. um, you don't get left behind uh, and be able to have it as a tool in your belt. Exactly. A hundred percent. 
All right. Well, yeah, that's it. Colby, appreciate it again, man. I, I, I we, we a always love having you on. Um, on you, you've been on the podcast twice, and now you're in our headless office hours. If um, if whenever you have something new, or if you want to just come on and hang out and maybe code a little bit, um, yeah, yeah, let's 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 do it, man. Yeah, I appreciate always being here. Uh, love hanging out with you guys. All right. Cheers, y'all. Thanks. Bye.